I've gotten a lot of good feedback from you guys on uh, this lampshade, so I decided to make a quick video here that describes how you can make any custom lampshade that you want. So now you may be wondering, how do I make my own custom lampshade lithophane? And it's really not that hard. I narrowed it down to four steps. Um, first you select the images that you want to turn into a lampshade. Then you measure the lampshade's light socket, in particular this cylinder diameter dimension that I labeled right here, and say that you measured 32.5. Remember that number, 32.5. Uh, then you go to lithophanemaker.com to design the website. So you go to lithophanemaker.com and there's a lot of stuff here, right? I'll just go through the minimum that you need to actually make the lampshade um, for now and then I'll come back later and I'll talk about uh, more of the details of all these other settings and what you can do with them. So you had 32.5. If you take 32.5 and you divide by 2, then you get 30 or sorry, 16 and a quarter, which is a little bit larger than this value. And you want this value here to be a little bit smaller so that the clamping section sort of, you know, with spring uh, stiffness and displacement, it kind of clamps onto it because it has to be pulled apart a little bit in order to fit around the diameter of that light socket. And then when you let go, it just clamps right on. So you want this number, which is the cylinder radius, to be a little bit less than half of um, what you measured here, the cylinder diameter. And then you upload your photos, which I've already done here. You've got the Balrog, I've got Mordor, I have the ring. And here, here's the size of uh, the lithophane lampshade you're going to get. Its radius is 125, so its diameter will be 250, which is pretty large. Uh, it might be too large for your printer, uh, depending on what your printer is. And then you have the height which is all the way from the very top to the very bottom. And it's a calculated dimension that's based on all these settings that you select and the images that you're using and so forth. And then you simply hit create STL. It has an estimated runtime and then you have to download it after it's done running. And I'll just skip ahead because I already, already did this once. And um, Here's, here's the folder after I've extracted what was in it, because it's a zip file to begin with to reduce the download time. And it has a settings folder, which you should not open with Notepad, because Notepad's got a strange um, definition for a carriage return that's, that doesn't match other things. So don't use Notepad. Use like WordPad or Notepad++. And then you can see it saves all the settings that you have in there, which is good. And then you can look at the file you made inside of whatever CAD package you want. And it's a pretty big file because, you know, there's a lot of detail in this. And you can see there's the Balrog, there's Mordor. There's the ring where we started. Um, here's our interface with the lamp. So you can see this this inner surface right here presses up against the outside of this brass socket. And you want that inner surface to be just a slightly smaller radius than the radius of, um, of this brass light socket so that it sort of clamps down on it. it it'll clamp down on it and it's got this uh, it's got this little missing portion right here so that it's able to bend but it's, because it has some stiffness it, it'll uh, push back 
against that deflection and it'll give you a clamping force. And that's the basics of um, making the STL file. Of course you also want to slice and print the lampshade. So to talk about that I'll just go back to the website. There's a 3D printing page. Um, it describes 3D printing tips for printing these and too long didn't read. Well that's kind of why you're watching this video right? So I'll just go through that. Um, you print slowly. I print about 40 millimeters per second with a very small layer height of 0.1 millimeters and I print inside of an enclosure because I use ABS often. I just like ABS. It's got greater toughness than PLA. PLA is brittle. It's, it's strong but it's brittle and um, use your best adhesion control. That depends on what bed you're using. I use a PEI sheet so I just make sure that the PEI sheet is always cleaned. I clean it with um, acetone and then I clean it with isopropyl alcohol and the adhesion is so good that you know I never get this uh, warping and curling like you see there anymore. I can use my whole bed <clears throat> and um, if you have an enclosure that's heated that's great because it helps with uh, separation and cracking that can occur but I just have a cardboard box actually the box that my printer came in and I just you know modified that box so that it would fit around the printer I can just set it on top of the printer and that helps with drafts well enough to, to not get um, this problem except for very large prints but I can even print I even printed this uh, lampshade without any heated enclosure without a heated enclosure <coughs> and it turned out pretty well given that fact and of course layer lines you want to have a uh, very small layer height to minimize layer lines and then if you're running into trouble just read all of this you know look on forums and they'll give you a lot of good advice so that you can uh, you know get rid of the problem that you're running into they also have a store for push plastic white ABS that's what I print with and here's an example piece made with that um, so back to those options and what they all do okay this is the distance between unique heights on your lithophane so if you zoom in zoom in very far um, you can you can see if you change the right view which flat lines right here you can see all these little triangles that 0.3 millimeters is the distance between uh, these two vertices so it's the length of the legs of these triangles not the hypotenuse but the legs of the triangles and so by making that number smaller you make it so that you have a finer resolution and uh, there's more detail however you also make it so that the file size is very large and this is 150 megabytes that's already pushing it for a lot of slicers and a lot of computers so you, you don't want to have a huge file but you do want to have uh, a lot of resolution so you got to find the right balance there and that's that's why I have this estimated file size it's not perfect but it'll give you an idea of how large your file is going to be okay and then the base width and height um, go, again going back here the base width and height is the distance from here to here and the distance from here to here so it's the size of that frame The overhang angle is the next setting and uh, it, since I'm assuming you're going to print it oriented up down with the uh, with this side down here on the bed, it's this angle right here when you print in that orientation. So it becomes the overhang angle and I assume you don't want to print with support so you can adjust that angle to make it so that you're comfortable with how it's 
you know what overhang angle you're going to print with and maximum and minimum thickness um, I actually prefer 2.8 I'm not going to print this model I just made but I prefer 2.8 and 0.5 for the uh, push plastic ABS that I have on my website because it that's that matches the opacity of the push plastic ABS it matches how well light transmits through the plastic and then this corresponds to the layer line width of my print settings because of my nozzle size you don't want this to become smaller than that layer line width because if it becomes smaller than the layer line width uh, you'll, your slicer is apt to have holes in your lithophane because it rounds down for some reason so if your layer line width is 0.6 it'll say well 0.5 here is smaller than the layer line width so we'll just make a hole right there instead of rounding up it just is constantly doing a floor instead of a round and uh, the spacing between pictures you can see that between each picture there's this frame spacing between pictures is the distance from there to there okay there's the estimated runtime, estimated file size. These are your interface options. You see I can change to a ledge and it just adds this ledge here so that this ledge could fit right in, right here between the bulb and the socket. But that design style makes it so that you have to more accurately measure the dimensions of your light bulbs and you know lamp setup, which can be troublesome. So see it's easier to design if you use clamp and it works because also for a lot of these light sockets you can see there's this bottom ledge right here so it'll just sit on that ledge even if the clamping force isn't great um, so this ledge radius is irrelevant if you're using the clamp which I recommend but the ledge radius is the radius of the circle right here so this is the lead this would be the ledge diameter from here to here okay um, the ledge height is the height of this portion uh, the cylinder radius is the radius from here to here of the cylinder um, the thickness is the thickness of this little piece right here the spoke thickness is the thickness of this piece the spoke depth is the distance from here to here so it kind of these control the stiffness of your spokes and I believe that covers it. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to email me at supportlithophanemaker.com. And I have a written out version of all this, too, if you want to comb through that. Um, thank you for your time.